welcome back to Fan Mail, where I answer questions and display submissions from you, the community. We're finally here. Hyborian's right around the corner, and I hope everybody's as excited as I am. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, it's linked in the description. Please check it out and let me know what you think. To celebrate this event, I picked today's guest star from the Brotherhood War roster. Please welcome General Garrett. Thanks for coming, General. You're welcome, but I can't stay long. Zack needs me in the fight. Absolutely he does. Don't worry, you'll be back to fighting your evil alien god tyrant overlord soon enough. But first, we have some questions. Our first several questions today are from Clumsy. So Garrett, how did you and Isaka first meet? So why did you think attacking Denver on your way out was a good idea? So is the armor you're currently wearing a new set of armor, or is it like a modified version of your armor from when you were left behind? How did you become the general for the Radical Reformation? Would you have had it in you to be able to fight or kill Zack had the circumstances led up to it? Nyla and I met after I joined the Radical Reformation. I had spent years trying to find someone to rally behind in opposing the UNSC. All the post-war insurrectionist factions were quickly falling one by one, but the Reformation showed promise. When I met Nyla the first time, she was alarmed by a Spartan coming to her door. But she soon realized that we shared the same level of animosity towards the UNSC. And together we began to develop a plan to raise a secret army using her leadership and my military experience. I was appointed the general of this army because I had the most training and experience of anyone in the Reformation, making me ideal to trade new recruits. I attacked Denver because she was in the way of my escape route. At the time, I didn't realize who she was in relation to Zack, but regardless, my attack was meant to disable, not kill. I knew that killing someone potentially close to Zack would not convince him to help me. That would only inspire him to fight me more and I knew I would not be able to raise my weapon against him. My current armor was obtained off the Outer Colony Black Market. There are lots of, let's say, questionable manufacturers trying to create their own version of Mjolnir armor. Our next set of questions come from Simon. Dear Garrett, where did you learn to wield an energy sword? How did you survive being left for dead? Could you share with us your upbringing from before your conscription into the Spartan 3 program? I was born on the colony world of Kolo. From what little I remember of my family, I know they were farmers, like many colonists were. Any future I had with them was taken from me when the Covenant attacked. Our defenders fought hard, but it didn't matter in the end. My parents had put me on an escape ship when the fighting started, but could not secure a passage for themselves. They'd be on the next ship, they told me. That ship never came. Later, I heard the planet was glassed. I knew I wouldn't see my parents again. Not long after, I was approached by the UNSC who gave me the choice. Live on the streets alone, or fight. My training taught me to use the most weapons, both human and covenant in origin, including the Type 1 energy sword. This training was what allowed me to escape the covenant when the UNSC abandoned me. When my rifle ran out of ammo... I used their own weapons against them and stole one of their own ships, leaving the planet before it burned. Here's a question from Sparkles1313. Did you trust the Lifebringer to keep her promises regarding your deal, or did you and Isaka have any backup plans to take her out in case she ended up betraying you? Surely you had anticipated that if she had a direct hand in creating the Spartan Fives, and new robotic fighters that she could potentially use them to backstab you? Even if you did have concerns, did Isaka share them, or did she dismiss them? Nyla trusted the Lifebringer, and I trust Nyla implicitly. It is clear now, however, that we should have scrutinized the Lifebringer more closely. I assumed that our mutual hatred of the UNSC would be enough to solidify our alliance, as it had been with Nyla. Perhaps we were blinded by the possibility of finally being able to properly fight the UNSC. Whatever the case, if we had any suspicions of betrayal, we never discussed them. I wish we had. Our foolhardiness ended up costing us all in the end. Here's a couple of questions from Luna Wolf. I got two questions, one for the each of you. 
For Garrett, why did you choose to have the green infected sword when there was two to three others you could have chose? For Kron, out of all the body acting sessions including all your Halo videos, which one was the most painful one you did but you had enjoyed it a lot? My sword turned green due to the type of artificial plasma I used to generate the blade. Synthesized ionized gas burns cleaner and more efficiently. So why don't all swords use synthesized gas? The Covenant refused to use anything other than natural plasma for religious reasons. I don't have that problem. Ah, makes sense. Luna, the most painful body acting session I've done has to be that last one we did for Hyborian. Didn't it go for like five hours? Totally worth it though. We had fun in the end. Here's a question from Onyx. Hey, Chronicler, are you hoping to continue the story of the Spartan legacy after Hyborian? Absolutely. Hyborian is planned to be the penultimate chapter in the Spartan legacy, which means there will be one more in the future, and it's going to be the biggest one of them all. Can't talk about it right now, though. Logan Blue 44 sent us a question. Hey, Kron. After the end of Brotherhood War Aftermath, I had a thought. Due to the Spartans being under the Lifebringer's control and committing genocide, that if they ever broke free from that control and try to return to normal life, that there would be a lot of prejudice and untrust from humanity. Although war ended. If that were to happen, yes, absolutely. Whether or not the people know the Spartans were mind control doesn't really matter. The galaxy has witnessed Spartans backstabbing the UNSC and butchering civilians. That kind of stuff just wouldn't go away. I think that would be a very interesting story to explore. Ao has sent us some questions and a fan art. That looks awesome, man. Thanks. Let's hope Hyborian plays out like that. Ayo, Kron? How did you get the idea to write Zack? What made you create Zack's character and personality? I wanted to write a Spartan who evolves from being an almost robot-like warrior into a true human being and portray the clash between the person and machine aspects of being a Spartan. Since Zack's inception, I've designed him as someone who starts with nothing to live for, as less than a person, more of a walking weapon than an actual human. Then, Catherine kickstarts his journey to become a person again, and he starts rebuilding his life piece by piece, finding a best friend and guardian, figuring out how to handle his burgeoning romantic feelings for Denver, struggling with his orders to kill Garrett despite them being brothers in the past, and learning to think about the orders he's given instead of just following them blindly. Hyborian will see the pinnacle of this development, but I'll save that for the show itself. Dilgrub9387 has a small question here. You know, I'm finding I enjoy objective game modes a lot more than deathmatch modes. I fucking hate standard CTF, but one-sided flag or bomb is a lot of fun. Oddball isn't bad either. But I really like zone games, like King of the Hill, or Strongholds, Territories, Land Grab, that sort of stuff. But of course, Infection is probably the most fun and unique game type Halo has featured. Too fucking bad we can't play it at Infinite. Mr. Best in the World asks... Hey Chronicler, what is your Halo campaign? Uh, I'm going to assume you mean favorite Halo campaign. Anyone who knows me well knows that Halo 4 is easily my favorite campaign, for a lot of reasons. It's closely followed by Halo 2 and ODST. Major Winners has a question for each of us. Howdy! Question for you guys! Garrett, can you tell Kron I'm a good driver and that I should be allowed to drive a Warthog again? Kron, we all know your dislike of Infinite, but I'm wondering what your ideal Forge mode would be. Not what 343 has announced or what we've seen, but what would you design the mode to be? Thanks for reading, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I don't know what he's talking about. That's okay, I wouldn't expect you to. Winners, if I could have the ultimate forge mode, it would basically be like an upgraded Halo 5 forge with better lighting, scripting, terrain generation, expanded budget, more weather effects and skyboxes, more processing power so you could have more stuff on screen without the whole map fucking up, that sort of stuff. It would also have much more developer assets included. For example, imagine a forge that you could spawn in anything the devs used in campaign mode. Anything. Uh, there's a whole lot of objects in Halo 5 that 
weren't in Forge for whatever reason. I don't really see any limitations. I don't really see the need for any limitations like that. Just give us everything. Maybe bot scripting as well. That would be cool. We've got a question from JaegerG274 here. Hey, Chronicler, I have a question about Phoenix Team. The other members not counting Catherine and Zack, what exactly are they? Because according to only Zack and Catherai, they are Spartans, but the rest have never understood what they were exactly. For Garrett, what do you think of the Spartans 5? Do you consider them authentic Spartans like Program 3? Oh, 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 oh. Catherine and Zack are the only Spartan members of Phoenix Team. All other members are unaugmented soldiers. Or in Guardian's case, a robot. It can be hard for me to consider the Spartan Fives as proper Spartans. They did not experience the same training we did. However, I must remember that even though they were created differently, their dedication and skill in battle is no less than any Spartan Three. It is a shame what happened to them. Killer Orca has sent us a small question. Quan specifically. Why Seattle? Because Halo 5's Forge has a lot of assets related to the Pacific Northwest, such as pine trees and the Alpine Canvas. This influenced the setting of Washington, which wasn't very impactful on Brotherhood War, but we're going to see a lot more of it in Hyborian. Seattle was specifically chosen as the primary city because it seems like the most logical place in the Pacific Northwest for the UNSC to set up a large command center. And admittedly, the fact that Seattle just happens to be the home of 343 was a coincidence. It just kind of happened to line up like that. I completely forgot about it while writing Brotherhood War. Here's a few questions from Showery Dragoon. For a chronicler, what kind of movies do you like to watch? For example, well-written movies, comedy, horror, or science fiction. And for Garrett, have you ever encountered any Covenant-related groups in your lifetime? Aside from the Covenant themselves? No, I never had any dealings with any splinter groups of any kind. I understand they gave the UNSC some trouble post-war, and that was fine by me. Oh, I like all kinds of movies. I couldn't really narrow it down to one specific type. However, I would say I watch much more science fiction films than anything else, but that's really inflated by all the Star Wars and Marvel content we've had lately. Tag Force supplied a variety of questions today. Hey guys, got a few questions for the both of you. For Kron, how long and rough did it take to make the series? Two, what was the hardest slash easiest part about production? For Garrett, what would your life be if you weren't left behind? Thanks for answering, and I'll see you guys next time. P.S. Garrett, you are my third favorite Spartan in the series. First is Catherine, and second is Saul. Thank you, Tag Force. I'm happy to be appreciated. If the UNSC hadn't left me to die, I'd probably have stayed running missions alongside Zack for a long time. I never would have found the Radical Reformation, and perhaps the Lifebringer never would have been awakened and taken over the Earth without the Reformation there to help her. So you're saying the entire Lifebringer saga happened because the UNSC betrayed you? I don't think it's that simple. Perhaps Nyla would have focused someone else to lead her army. And the Homer Bound still could have stumbled across Cradle. It was Guardian's presence that awoke the Lifebringer from stasis after all. Not us. There's lots of factors. Nah, I like my domino effect theory better. Anyway, Tag Hyborian took a bit over a year and a half to make. My longest time spent on a single project to date. Body acting was probably the hardest part. It was a very lengthy and stressful process this time around. I don't think I can call any of it easy, honestly. Forging was hard, editing was hard, it was all much more difficult than previous productions, but that's to be expected when you're aiming for higher quality. Here's a submission from Obi-Wan DS. General Garrett, did you approve of the timing to enact the Reformation's campaign against the UNSC, or did you harbor doubts regarding the tactical readiness of its army? What pushed the decision to attack then and there? On that note, after the opening volley of the campaign, the Reformation was put on the back foot relatively quickly and nearly dealt its death knell in just six months. Were you given any orders to not press any tactical advantages? And if so, did you argue against them despite it being in line with what the Lifebringer was allegedly planning, as she was presenting herself to be your ally at the time? 
Or Kron, was this all just another of your literary allusions to Star Wars, where the big bad plays both sides while handicapping one particular faction? The Lifebringer's similarities to Palpatine are undeniable, and she definitely was manipulating both sides, no doubt about it. It was the Lifebringer's call to launch the attack. She was the one who wanted to wait for Zack to return. I personally would have attacked before he was found. The army was as ready as it could be, but the Lifebringer insisted on him being there, for revenge purposes. It was actually because of her that they were found. Her ships looked for him for years. Zack being there definitely made things more complicated, but it wasn't up to me. I followed Isaka's lead, and Isaka was working closely with the Lifebringer. So it was what it was. Beyond surprise and superior weaponry, we didn't have much of any tactical advantages following our invasion, but that was accounted for in the plan. All we had to do was stall the UNSC until we could finish the portal and bring the Hyborians from Cradle. We knew there would be losses, but the reformists were devoted to the cause. We all wanted to see the UNSC burn, and understood that toppling a giant would have costs. So we stuck to the plan, and our dedication paid off. We got what we wanted, for a moment. We were overjoyed, and then everything went to hell. Our last question today comes from Guide 42 Question to Garrett, why did the Reformation choose to use modified Covenant weapons and vehicles over UNSC equipment? Was it not more difficult to train effective soldiers using gear that was, at least in part, alien in origin over something like the Warthog, which is noted for having similar controls to civilian vehicles. Also, how do slash did you feel about Kurt Ambrose as a person? Do you hold him personally responsible for the Spartan 3 program, or does him also being a Spartan change anything about that? Nyla and I knew that we could never match the UNSC for numbers and training so we had to find other ways to level the playing field. If our armaments and vehicles were superior to what the UNSC used, we could have stand much more of a chance. It wasn't that difficult to recover large amounts of salvaged Covenant tech, but after the events on Cradle, we discovered an abandoned Covenant automated forge that supplied us with a bounty of fresh-off-the-line weapons and vehicles. Some weapons, like the carbine and the storm rifle, were actually fairly intuitive for my men to train with and I am proud of what they were managed to accomplish. That being said, we still use some stolen UNSC gear for logistics and transportation, but that was mostly off the field of combat. As for Kurt Ambrose, I held him in the highest regard. I knew it wasn't his fault I was there, and he worked hard to mold us into the best soldiers we could be. What's up, guys? I'm the Home Slice, Ascend Hyperion. What? What? Nothing? Well, that's all the questions we have today. Thanks so much for coming, General. My pleasure. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in a few weeks for the premiere of Hyborian. Ah, I'm so excited!